Now, I want to start off here um, just letting you know I have a special needs daughter. She started having seizures when she was almost three years old. Um, and basically, it was scary. It was terrifying. Of course, we called 911. We went to the hospital. They pumped her full of anti-seizure medication, which turned her completely limp and into a zombie, basically. And those medications are very harsh. Um, but they just want to get the seizure to stop. So they do whatever they have to do to get the seizure to stop. So when I got home... Um, I basically just saw that this is not how I wanted to be treating this kind of a problem, okay? I'm not interested in, in giving her a harsh pharmaceutical. I'm not interested in going to the hospital constantly or whatever, you know? If, it's, if you have a special needs kid like I do, you have to be able to treat these things on your own a lot of times. And uh, so that's what I started doing research into was how um, I could do, you know, DIY it or whatever you want to say at home and do it where it's going to be the best situation for my daughter so that it's she's the healthiest and it's the safest medication because a lot of those pharmaceuticals are not safe and um, and a lot of the um, homeopathic ones are a lot you know, safer and gentler on the system without the harsh side effects. So I started um, doing the, the protocol that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today, and I have to tell you that it does control her seizures 100%, 100%. Um, so I am going to get started into that, and I'll tell you more about that later. So stay tuned, stick with the video. I'll try not to be long-winded, but I've got a lot of good information to share, so please stay tuned. Okay, before I get started here, first off, I do need to mention the fact that I am not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional in any way. I'm a mom, and I've done my own research online, and I've decided to make decisions for my family. Well, my husband and I have. So um, when we're, the things that we talk about um, in this video are completely up to you if you want to try them, if you don't want to try them, if you want to talk to your doctor, if you just want to wing it yourself, that is completely on you. I am not a doctor. I'm not giving medical advice. I am uh, merely telling you what I have researched personally, what has worked for my family, and um, that's where I'm going to leave it. So the rest is up to you. If you want to try something or not try it, that's up to you. It's completely 100% on you. That's my disclaimer, okay? Hi, I am here to talk to you about seizures and controlling seizures in your child um, with a homeopathic kind of a technique, okay? So first of all, let's start with what is a seizure, okay? Seizures are basically like misfirings in the brain, okay? Sometimes you have them because um, maybe your kid gets overheated. Um, you know, there's febrile seizures, but even besides the regular febrile ones, like a regular seizure, sometimes if they're like... Uh, from a fever, I mean, sometimes if they're just prone to seizures, if they get overheated, like they're not even sick, they just get overheated, that could cause them to seize. Um, sometimes um, constipation can cause seizures if your kid is constipated and they're trying to poop. Um, and uh, But whatever it is, basically, when the seizure is happening, it's basically misfirings in the brain, okay? So um, whatever kind that you have, I know there's a bunch of different kinds of seizures, and I've looked into all the different kinds, okay? I'm not going to get into the different kinds and, well, this one is this way, so this treatment, whatever. I'm doing one kind of um, treatment to be used for seizures, okay? Now, um, the doctors want to divide them up into different kinds, but honestly, at the end of the day, I think it's all the same treatment because it's all misfiring. So you just need to chill out the misfirings, okay? So um, now that we've talked about what causes your seizures or causes seizures, okay, what causes the damage and or death because of a seizure, okay? Is it the seizure itself? Now, I did a bunch of research, and honestly, from what I saw, I read in some medical journals, which is what the doctors actually, you know, read, like, because that's where they put, like, their studies and things that they've done. It actually said in this med medical journal that I read that what causes damage to the brain and death um, is not actually the physical seizing. It's actually a lack of oxygen to the brain. So that tells me that if I can um, get my, make sure that my kid has uh, correct airflow and oxygen coming to them, then I can help them through the seizure naturally rather than trying to just pump them full of pharmaceuticals, okay? So um, that's the first thing that I wanted to note is that uh, that that's what you, the main thing you have to worry about is make sure that your kid continues breathing, okay? So, um, okay, now why would you want to treat seizures naturally? Why would you want to look into a natural remedy, okay? If you start looking into uh, pharmaceuticals, 
um, go to whatever pharmaceutical it is that you're interested in um, and read the actual, all of the description of what the side effects are, okay? Possible side effects or whatever. I don't care if they're rare or whatever else. What is possible that is going to happen to you or your child from those, those medications, okay? When I was looking at the seizure meds that they wanted to put my daughter on, um, I looked at the side effects and it was listed as a side effect for anti-seizure medication that a seizure is a side effect. So that means anti-seizure medicine could give my kid a seizure, okay? Um, another side effect that was literally listed uh, was death, okay? Death as a side effect is not an option in this house. So the thing is with these, um, these pharmaceuticals, and a, a lot of parents that I've talked to too who have kids who are on pharmaceuticals, they say their kids are never the same again and they miss their kids because their kids basically turn into zombies because all the doctors are doing is numbing their brain basically with these pharmaceuticals that are quite frankly very dangerous, okay? Um, so that's a good reason to look into a natural option instead. And another thing about that is that um, a lot of parents who have their kids on pharmaceuticals for seizures they're not just on one okay because one maybe it'll work for a little bit and then it stops so then they switch them to this other anti-seizure med maybe that one doesn't work so then they're on a combination most kids that i've heard of are on a combination and even when they're on a combination of dangerous medications they are still not seizure free 100 percent okay now the protocol that i'm going to tell you about it is 100 percent effective from my personal experience okay so that's what we're going to get, get into here. Um, I'm going to talk to you first about the treatment tools, seizure treatment tools. These are the things that you're going to want to purchase and have on hand and ready to go. So let's go into that, okay? Okay, let's talk about the things that you should purchase to have on hand. The number one thing that um, has the potential to stop your child's seizures is this right here. Ginger, there it is, super concentrated ginger root liquid extract. This is by Horbach. It's on Amazon. A bottle this size is um, about $11 and it's very concentrated stuff. This is my number one go-to to stop seizures. The other things that I incorporate are maybe to help them get through the seizure, but I haven't found anything else that stops the seizure in my child except this. This literally will stop a seizure in its track, okay? I've seen it happen with my daughter multiple times and it will stop the seizure 100%. So uh, that's what you need to buy first off, okay? Next, we are gonna talk about frankincense, which I will put a picture of right here because um, mine is in the other room. So frankincense, this is what you wanna buy. Um, this is a little bit more optional. Like I said, ginger is the not optional. You must, I mean, that's, that's what I have to use, okay? Frankincense is optional. Frankincense helps with um, the brain. Um, it helps with, uh, excuse me, the blood, uh, the air, oxygen, ugh, the oxygen in the blood, okay? It keeps it all like um, circulating and helps with oxygenation and stuff like that. So that can really help them get through a seizure. Um, I have heard parents say that frankincense stopped their child's seizure. I have never experienced that, but um, I still use it just to help with oxygenation to get through a seizure. And frankincense is really cheap. You can get a bottle of it for not that much, you know, 15 or 20 bucks, and it'll be super concentrated. You have to dilute it if you're going to be putting it on your child's skin, which is the way that I use it. We don't use it orally. Um, so you want to dilute it in a carrier oil, um, like olive oil or something like that. You can find your percentages online for diluting something like that for yourself, okay? Okay, I had to take a baby break. Sorry. Okay, so the next thing that you're going to get after the frankincense, you're going to get yourself some CBD oil. Okay, this is CBD. This is from Bellasante Health. That's a local person that I buy it from here in Arizona. And uh, this is very concentrated stuff. This is not your average, you know, you went on um, one of these CBD websites and bought. Uh, those are normally like 50 milligrams or something like that. This is 500 milligrams. This is very concentrated, powerful stuff, okay? Now, what is the CBD oil going to do for you during a seizure? The CBD, from what I have seen, does not stop seizures, at least not in my child. I guess it has worked for some people. My child, it hasn't worked. So what I use this CBD oil is for is to just help with the brain function and cognate, like to keep them cognizant. It will help keep my daughter cognizant through her seizure instead of just being like completely like zoned out. Um, that's what I've noticed it helping with. So that is a good thing to have in our toolbox. Okay. Another thing that you would want to get is this right here. Oxygen boost. 
I buy it on Amazon. It's just oxygen, like um, boosts of oxygen. So um, I guess athletes will use this. Um, and some people like that, like when they're like doing sports and stuff, then they stop and they just give themselves a couple of boosts of oxygen. So I find this helpful um, if I have any doubts about the quality or quantity of air that my daughter is getting, you know, if she's having a hard time with the seizure, this can help tremendously with that. Okay. Now, another thing is you want to get some kind of a rubber mat. Um, I will put a picture of the actual mats that I buy on Amazon. They're actually a sensory toy. Um, that's these different mats. Um, and they're kind of like thick rubbery ones. This is really thin. This is just a grippy thing. So I don't use this one. But I'm going to use this as an example um, since I don't have the other mats on me right this second. So basically, you have the risk of um, during a seizure that the child could bite their tongue and injure themselves or you know hopefully not bite it off or whatever but you can't put your fingers there because they're i mean they're seizing so you could really hurt them if you like try to pry their mouth open or you could get hurt yourself quite frankly because they won't know what they're doing they're not able to control themselves and they can bite down on you okay so i don't even always have to use anything like this if my daughter's tongue is out of the way when she, if she was having a seizure then i don't even worry about this now if her tongue is in the way it just so happens and she's going down like that and I'm worried that she's actually going to injure herself because sometimes she doesn't even clamp down all the way but if if I'm worried about that happening and if there is a gap where you could put something in I'm not talking about prying the mouth open that would be dumb but if there's a gap and you could stick that in the edge just stick it right there in the edge is going to keep them from being able to clamp down all the way on their own tongue okay I know they say not to put anything in the mouth or whatever so this is not medical advice. This is just what I have tried before personally. Okay. So if you're, if I am worried about that, that's what I'll do. Stick that in the edge there. It'll keep them from being able to clamp down. And also it's so rubbery that it's not going to injure their teeth where they're going to chip them or anything. And it's not going to hurt their jaw from clamping down on something like hard or whatever. And obviously you have to use this with discretion. You know, it, a lot of times you might not even need it. It just depends on the need of your child. Okay. And what risks you're worried about. And maybe you're not even worried about that. You're just worried about stopping the seizure. Okay. But that's just another option. If you're worried about tongue biting um, and you have a child who, ha who does that when they're having a seizure. Okay, now we're going to talk about the seizure protocol. And what do I mean by seizure protocol? What I mean is, what are you going to do when your kid starts having a seizure? Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is make sure that your kid is breathing. Okay, that's an absolute must. You want to make sure that your child is breathing. Um, because remember, that's the thing that causes the brain damage and death is the lack of oxygen. Okay, then you're going to put your kid on the floor um, or some firm surface. Okay, you don't want to lay them on like a pillow or something. But I would also wouldn't put them on like a, a tile floor that's like super hard. Something that's firm but comfortable. On their side preferably so that the drool, um, if they're drooling, um, then it can drip to the ground and it doesn't block their breathing. Okay, um, you want to, if you can tilt the head back just a little bit, then tilt the head back just a tad so that they have an open airway. Okay, the next thing you can do is take a towel and place it underneath their head um, to make it a little bit more comfortable. Also to catch drool and um, any of the med medication that's going to be dripping out of their mouths throughout this process. Okay, you're going to remove enough of the clothing so that um, they can be comfortable and they can cool off if they're overheated. Okay, especially pay attention to that. If you have any hot spots like the uh, head, armpits, diaper line, stuff like that, you're going to apply cool wet rags um, and get those into those spots to start cooling them off in case that is what's triggering a seizure. Now, if you don't have a heat issue, then you can skip that step. Okay. Now this is where, um, you're really going to get into the treatment. What you're going to do is take that concentrated ginger and you are going to drip that into their, um, mouth, basically onto their gums. Cause you're not trying to drip it straight down their throat where, where they could like breathe it in or something. You're going to drip it onto their gums and on the inside of their cheek. Okay, and what that's going to do is allow it to just kind of seep into their mouth so that it can soak into like the, the inner part of their mouth. Like, you know how you'll hold some medicines under your tongue because it'll like absorb into your mouth faster that way. That's basically what you're doing um, is to put it across their gums just from the side. Just drip it into their gums, uh, onto their gums and inside their cheek so that that can start absorbing into their uh, mouth. That is going to be the thing that's going to help stop the seizure. Okay, then I take the ginger up to the top of the head and um, I literally drop the ginger 
the concentrated ginger straight onto her scalp because everybody knows you can absorb things through your skin, right? And if you're desperate to stop a seizure, then you're just going to do everything you can. So I take the concentrate, I jump, uh, drop it onto her scalp, and then I'll take some and rub some on the soles of her feet as well um, because you can absorb things through the, the soles of the feet as well. So I'm just doing everything I can to get the ginger inside of her as quickly as possible without, you know, the possibility of her breathing it in. Now, I do want to mention as a side note that if your kid is staying pretty cognizant and they're fighting it because the ginger tastes too disgusting, you could have diluted ginger um, already prepared and you can drop that into their mouth. It won't be as harsh and nasty. They'll need more of it because it's diluted, but they won't fight you as much on it, okay? I don't have to worry about that too much with my daughter. I do keep both on hand um, just so that I'm prepared for whatever. So I have a bottle of concentrate and then I also dilute it like one third ginger to two thirds water and I put it in a little dropper of my own. So then I have that diluted option in case I want that. But I'm going to go to straight to the concentrate, if at all possible, because it's going to work the fastest that way. Okay? So the next thing you're going to do, um, you're going to continue to go back to dropping ginger in the mouth. Okay? That is um, basically the the uh, the most important thing, get it in their mouth. You've already at this point, you dropped some on their head, rubbed it in their scalp. You dropped it on the soles of their feet, rubbed that, and then go back to the mouth and, and continue. Okay, until the seizures stop, basically, is what you're going for, pretty much. Um, you don't really have to worry about having too much ginger. You know, you're, you're dropping it in by, you know, drops anyways. It's not like you're putting droppers full constantly. The most I've ever given my daughter to stop a seizure was three full dropperfuls, and that 100% stopped the seizure. But you might, you probably don't need that much. So you're going to start, you know, with just doing a few drops in the mouth and then go to the other spots that we talked about and then go back to the mouth again and drop some more there because you're trying to get her to, uh, him or her to absorb as much of the ginger as possible. Okay. Then once I feel like I've gotten some good ginger going, the next thing I'm going to do is to take my CBD oil um, and I'm going to rub that. Um, if it's a salve, you can rub it on. If it's the liquid, then you can drop it on. Either way, I basically put it on the feet, another spot on the feet and up on the skull, um, wherever I didn't put the ginger because the, the ginger's already in the other spots. So I just kind of try to add it to, okay? You can also drop it in the mouth the same way that you did the ginger. Um, you don't need near as much of that. It's very concentrated. Just to get some of that in, just to help them with their brain function throughout this process is a good idea. And then you're going to go straight back to the ginger again. Okay, and just dropping it just a couple drops at a time on those gums. Okay, now um, anytime that, that you think about it too, you can grab your oxygen boost and just give a couple boosts of oxygen right in front of their face. Okay, just give a couple of little boost, boost with the oxygen. All right, that's going to um, just kind of help boost their, their air intake, right? Because you're just trying to help them through this seizure. You're basically doing anything you can to keep them comfortable and to help them through this seizure um, with the least amount of damage while you're waiting for the ginger to take effect. And it does take effect pretty quickly since it's concentrated, but it can take a little time. Okay, you can, if you have any su um, saliva building up, you can use a nose sucker or something like that. Um, in the mouth you can just put it in the edge of the mouth in like the cheek area and just suck out some of that saliva so that they don't choke up and it doesn't restrict their breathing at all okay that's why you have them on their side and also to watch out in case they vomit um, I know with my daughter I have to check her diaper for poop because she does poop during her seizures a lot of times and if she's cognizant enough to know it it does irritate her so if she's comfortable if I've already got the ginger in her and if I'm just waiting for that to take effect and I'm trying to keep her comfortable while she's still on her side I will try to kind of change her diaper just so that she is more comfortable okay but obviously there's other things that are more important than that so you can put that on the back burner if you have to worry about things like breathing and getting the ginger inside okay okay so like i said that's your basic protocol that's what your go-to is going to be that's your main line of treatment is that ginger extract okay that is like the thing that god gave humans evidently to help with seizures you know so um Basically, I would just do that until I would see that her seizure was lessening. And then if I'm like, well, I already gave her a crap ton of ginger and I see that the seizure is lessening, then I just stop. Just just chill. Keep your child comfortable. Talk to him or her, you know, stroke their head. Keep them comfortable. And most likely that ginger is going to just keep um, taking effect 
and the seizure is going to be lessening and lessening as you uh, go along without you having to continue to administer. Um, like I said, the most that I've ever had to use was three full droppers for my daughter. And I've never needed more than that. So um, everybody's different though. I have a friend and her son is much older and much larger than my child. And she used two droppers and that was perfectly fine for her, her son to stop his seizure. So um, you're just going to have to play it by ear with most homeopathic things. That's just the way it goes. Just see how it goes. And once you feel that they've got enough and that they're coming out of the seizure, then just keep them comfortable and relaxed. And just as a side note, when your child is done with the seizure, they're going to be exhausted, which I'm sure you already know if you're dealing with seizures. So just let them sleep. Let them sleep, sleep, sleep. That's what the Lord did so that um, so that they would be able to recover from this. It can take a long time to recover because a seizure is like an all-body workout, you know, constantly. If you can imagine going to the gym and just working every single muscle all at once, you know. So they just need to sleep, sleep, sleep it off after that. Um, another thing that I will do is I will use the ginger as a preventative. So if like there's, um, storms and I know that that could trigger a seizure, or if my daughter is coming down with something, even like a cold that I know that could trigger a seizure, I will just give her the ginger. I'll put it in her food or I'll sometimes put it in her bottles, but normally I will put it in her food and just feed it to her orally as a preventative. And it literally keeps her, I've never given her ginger and then had her have a seizure. Never. I've also never had her have a seizure, give her ginger and have that not work. Never. Ever since I found out about the ginger concentrate, as long as I'm buying good quality stuff, it has worked 100% of the time. So I just wanted to share these tips with you. Um, you know, if you, God bless you, dude. If you have a kid who has seizures, I know that that is not something easy to deal with. It's horrible. It'll give you PTSD. It'll give your kid PTSD because it's so hard for them to go through. And um, I'd be happy to pray for you, man. If you have that kind of a situation, drop a note in the comments. I will pray for you. I will pray for your child and their seizures. More than happy to do that because the Lord is so gentle and kind with us and he wants to help us with our burdens. Okay. And um, if you try any of these solutions and they work for you, you know, feel free to post in the comments to encourage others, um, you know, and maybe you try it and it doesn't actually work for you. Well, what are you risking? Like the ginger's not going to hurt your child unless they're allergic to ginger, which I haven't even heard of happening before. Um, but what is it going to hurt to try, you know? So just maybe give it a try and see if it works. Um, I've never heard of ginger interacting with any pharmaceuticals. So even if your kid is on a pharmaceutical, you could potentially try the ginger. Now that's going to be between, between you and your God and you and your doctor and you and your child and you and your husband or, or wife, you know, whoever it is who's watching this video. Um, that's up to you if you guys want to try it. Um, or not. I do not consult doctors about stuff like this because they don't care about homeopathic remedies. So, you know, for us, like a lot of times my husband and I, we've tried things on ourselves. So we'll take a medicine and be like, how does this make me feel? You know, maybe I'm not in a seizure, but I can see, whoa, that really does something to your brain or whatever, you know, like taking CBD or something like that. So um, there's other ways that you can do stuff. It's up to you if you want to consult with a doctor or not. Obviously, they are the medical professionals so um, that's between you and them. Um, but ultimately, you are the parent. You make the decisions for your child. And uh, so I just pray that God blesses you um, as you try to find um, a more natural remedy for treating your child's seizures. One last thing I forgot to mention is I would advise that you um, make yourself a seizure protocol. I literally typed up the steps of what to do if my child has a seizure so that I don't freak out and forget everything because I, I can have like an anxiety attack from it because I'm so worried about them. So I literally have it printed up. I have it posted on the walls in each of the main rooms of the house. And uh, then we have like a bag that we keep all the medicines in. So it's already like we already know grab the medicine bag consult the seizure protocol right away. Okay. Because, uh, you don't want to have to try to deal with that when you're going through something you want to plan in advance and know what are we going to do if, and when, you know, my little baby girl, my little baby boy has a seizure. Okay. So I would advise that you make yourself a very concise plan. Also very specific so that it can help you get through, uh, your child's specific seizures. Cause I'm sure they may not be the same as my child's seizures. So I just wanted to mention that. And lastly, if you have any questions, post them in the comments and I will be happy to answer them if I have an answer for you. And if I don't, then man, the internet is a great resource. Go and do some research and God bless you as you search for remedies.